Hello book lovers, welcome to my channel. My name is Kay if you're new here and today I am going to be sharing with you my first ever just life reading week vlog type thing. So I'm definitely an amateur. I have done one reading vlog before and it was for a readathon but this time I just decided to pick up my camera, film some just of the life things that I am doing throughout the week, but also just how I incorporate reading in my lifestyle. So stick around and stay tuned if you want to check out what that's like. Oh, I have a list of some notes here because I was MIA in March. March was honestly such a crazy month. I live in Ohio. If you have been following the news at all about Ohio, you will know that we have had some of the most crazy and intense weather. We have had so many severe thunderstorms, floodings, tornadoes, and we even have another severe thunderstorm tonight. And it's just pretty much been nonstop. So we've been dealing with basement flooding and me and all of my anxiety around that. I have a seven month old baby and all of these storms I think I could handle before having a baby. But now that I have a baby, it's just like I'm more anxious because if the power goes out or if something goes wrong. I just want to make sure I have everything I need for him and a safe place for us to go to. That has just been crazy. And I was in the biggest reading slump in the month of March. I think I DNF'd maybe five different books and it wasn't even because they were bad. It was just I just could not get in the mood to read these books. So I think I'll pick up the majority of them later on. Okay so battery died so I don't know where it cut out but essentially what I was saying is I DNF'd so many different books in March and I just decided I'm not gonna force myself to read things that I am not in the mood for so I just didn't I think I maybe finished four books in the month of March maybe four or five and whatever I did read I will put in a reading wrap up after this month too because I just don't think it's enough for a whole video just a few chaotic updates. I did start writing my very own first novel. I don't know if I will pursue publishing or not, but I do think that would be really cool if I feel confident and comfortable enough to pursue that. I've honestly never written before. I am working on a cozy adventure romanticy and um I don't know. I'll share more about that as I go on that process. If that's something you'd be interested in watching or hearing about what that process is like for somebody who's literally never been a writer before, um, let me know if you'd be interested in that. I am just having so much fun. I have a whole poster board downstairs taped up in my living room with the whole plot line and there's sticky notes all over it. I did record a Pango book mail I was packaging up some Pango book mail and you'll see it in the background. It's just been so much fun to sit down and think about connecting a story and the beginning, the middle, and the end and creating these characters. And I've been creating them with my husband and my friend Callie. It's just, it's just been such a joy. That's something else that's been keeping me busy. On a personal note, if you didn't know, I am a hairstylist. I've been doing hair since 2015 is when I enrolled in hair school. Nine years now. And I partnered with a hair product beauty company. It's something else that's been keeping me busy and it's been just incredible. I work in the salon one night a week. Eventually I will be picking up a second night. I just don't work a lot in the salon right now because Zion will not eat for other people. He will specifically only nurse and so it's just a little bit stressful for me to be gone for hours at a time. Anyway, partnering with this beauty company on top of working in the salon has just been really awesome and really great. If my hair looks super oily, it is because I have a hair oil treatment in it. So don't worry, I washed my hair a few days ago. I'm just oiling it so that way my scalp is nice and clean and ready and healthy. But yeah, so those are just all the new things that have been keeping me busy. It's just been kind of all over the place, um, weird on the reading type of 
part of life but April it's been it's been picking back up so we're doing much better the next thing I wanted to just give you an update on the book that I'm currently reading so I'm currently reading The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson. This is the second book in the Remnant Chronicles and you guys I am just loving this trilogy. The first book is The Kiss of Deception and I'm wanting to collect all of the hardcovers of these because I just think they're so pretty. Like the first book there's a difference in the cover between the hard this is the hardcover this is the paperback and I just prefer the hardcover I don't know I think it's so pretty but I would like to collect all of the hardcovers and then I'll probably sell the paperbacks on like Pango Book but in this series you are following Princess Leah and Princess Leah was about to be in her arranged marriage type thing and she was not about that life so she ran away in the first book and she ends up in this really small town and kind of in a love triangle type of situation she starts falling for um, these two different guys and one of them she doesn't know is an assassin that was hired to kill her and the other one is the prince that she was supposed to marry and he ends up following her and they both have these made-up identities she has a made-up identity and <laughs> it's just wild and crazy and I am obsessed with it and when you find out who the assassin actually is and who the prince actually is I was just mind blown and so this is following what happens after the kiss of deception i don't want to go into detail on this but i do want to say that mary e pearson is one of the most clever writers that i have ever read i'm obsessed with the dance of thieves duology which i think actually takes place after the remnant chronicles but i ended up reading that one first and i loved it and i don't feel like i missed out too much because i read it a second what I will say, the way that Mary E. Pearson reveals things always blows me away. Like for example, in the first book, um, everybody had a hidden identity and you don't find out closer to the end who the actual assassin is and who the actual prince is. Um, and when that was revealed, my jaw just dropped. In this one, there are also people in disguise and they're starting to be revealed. And it just like keeps me thinking like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's who that character was the whole time. I don't know if that even makes sense, but it is just genius. She's so smart. Next section is a book haul. So if you know, I'm on a book buying ban in 2024, but I want to give away. I want to give away. And that was just so cool and exciting. Um, that was in a Facebook group that I'm in for booktube people. And I just wanted to share with you the books that I got and the little trinkets that I got and then also a few of you guys have so graciously gifted me some books from my Amazon wish list so I just wanted to show those books too so let's get started with the giveaway books in the giveaway I got a few trinkets so there were some annotating pens and I think they're really pretty I haven't opened them yet so I don't know what I think of these but those are pretty and then some annotation flags they're very pastel which i prefer and then this is the cutest little bookmark it's like a you slide it on the corner of the page and it's a heart which is just so precious and then all of these just different stickers which i have a sticker thing right now i'm obsessed with stickers um this one is so fun it's lit <laughs> I am down for a good pun always. So the first book that I was so surprised by was the holiday edition of Fourth Wing. I have the regular one, but I have the special edition of Iron Flame that has the black edges. So this is going to look so nice next to my Iron Flame. I'm not going to go into detail about what Fourth Wing is about because I think everybody and their brother on the internet has heard of this Dragon Rider School politics romanticy. I feel like that's all you really need to know. Um, but the dragons are amazing and you will be obsessed with them if you read this book. <laughs> the next one is The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. And I think this is the same author who wrote, yeah, to all the boys I've loved before. And I did try to read that book and I wasn't a big fan of it. This sounds very like high school YA romancy, so I honestly don't know that I'll read this one. This might be one that I gift to a friend that I think would like it better, but if you think I should read this, let me know. Um, I just don't 
sound super interested in this one. The next two, so I'm kind of nervous about these. So I have never read a thriller or anything like that. And I think these are like psychological thriller type of books. So first one is The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. And I have been so interested in this book, but I'm also kind of scared of it. Please let me know if this is super duper gory, because if it is, I have a couple people in my life who I think might appreciate this book. Like I'm a pansy. I get so creeped out easily. I get very paranoid very easily so I don't want to read something that's going to make me super paranoid I don't know I don't know should I read this just help me should I gift this or should I read this please let me know and the next one I'm so interested in but I'm kind of scared too the writing retreat by Julia Bartz it's about this author who I think she's writing her first novel and she gets picked to go to this island and everybody who goes there has to write a book within a month like from start to finish. The only reason I'm hesitant is I heard that it's kind of in like a haunted type of place and that the person hosting this is like a horror writer so I don't know if I'll get too nervous or scared reading this so like one thing I don't do is I'm not a fan of ghosty type of things I'm not a fan of like demonic type of things like I'm okay um, watching like a psychological thriller but as soon as like you put ghosts and haunting and spirits and demons and that kind of stuff I'm just like a little bit too chicken for that <laughs> I'm not a fan of that so if anybody's read this please let me know because I actually am super interested in this one but I don't know if it's something that's gonna freak me out too much so the three books that I was gifted from my Amazon wish list I wanted to share those with you guys too so the first one is it happened one summer by Tessa Bailey I have never read a Tessa Bailey book I honestly am not a huge contemporary romance reader but in March I did read a part of your world by Abby Jimenez I think that's how you say her name and I just fell in love with that story I rated that one five stars so I think I want to get more into reading some contemporary romance but I've had this one on my list forever I just heard some of my booktube friends talk about this I think I'm definitely gonna save this one for summertime but all I know is it's like grumpy sunshine and this note came from Brittany and Brittany said, this is one of my favorite Tessa Bailey books. I hope you enjoy it. So thank you so much for gifting me this, Brittany. That is so kind of you. The next book that was gifted to me is Trial of the Sun Queen by Nisha J. Tooley. I hope I said that name right. But this one says, 10 women, a deadly contest. Only one can win the Sun King's heart. So I'm getting kind of like bachelor slash Hunger Games vibes. I mean, I'm not sure, but I am really excited about this. I heard one of my friends talking about this, so I just immediately put it on my list, but I don't know too much detail about it. This one was from Lindsay, and she said, happy reading, girl. So thank you so much, Lindsay, for sending that to me. I, I really appreciate that so much, and I cannot wait to pick this one up. Finally, I sadly lost the note to this one, so I don't know who this one is from but this is a graphic novel, Enola Holmes. And I put this on my wish list just recently because my friend Liv at Liv's Library started talking about this in her spring book video because it's just a graphic novel that has super springy colors and things like that. So what I do know is this is like Sherlock Holmes' younger sister and she is solving mysteries. So I just think that sounds like so much fun. But the pictures in this are just stunning they are just so well done so I am just very excited to pick this one up I think this will be a great rainy day book I don't remember who this was from but I do remember the note said that um, the person didn't read graphic novels but their sister did and their sister really loved this one so thank you whoever you are that sent this to me I really appreciate that and I cannot wait to read this one too so that's all the books that I have for the book haul portion of this video just let me know what books you think that I should give a try um, the ones that I was hesitant on and let me know if you've read any of those books and if any of them are your favorites.
you follow me on bookstagram a couple days ago i went on and i talked about how a cord in my library exploded and how i had to get a new side table because of that so basically what happened is every single night i come up here to my library and i recline in this chair and i nurse zion before bed and i put him down in his nursery which is right next to the library and when i had reclined to nurse him there was this giant spark that came out from behind me then started smelling smoke and basically jumped up with Zion, freaking out, calling for Jacob, and he comes in here, and what we had found is that a cord, so I had one of those side tables that have outlets in the top of it, if you know what I mean. I'll put a picture in here so you can see what I'm talking about, but the cord to that table had got stuck underneath the recliner, and it basically smashed the cord, and it exploded, and now I'm just like terrified. So I got rid of that table and I got a new table and I wanted to show it to you guys because I think it's perfect for readers. It was $20 on Amazon, super easy to put together. And it kind of reminds me of those bookish carts, but I don't like the look of the bookish carts. And I feel like this is a perfect replacement for somebody who might not be interested in those. So let me show you what this table looks like. So sorry about the back lighting, but this is the table. It's actually pretty small, which I like. I just have my water. Um, I usually put my Kindle on that little phone stand. And this is a light without a cord, so I don't have to have a cord wrapping around the chair anymore this has like this tray type thing in the middle that I put my devotional book and then also the Bible recap so when I'm up here in the mornings I can read that but this bottom part has an extra shelf so I just put upcoming like mood TBR books right there that I will switch out every month or every week just to find books that I'm currently in the mood to read but I thought that was like a perfect little alternative to one of those book cart type things. So I just wanted to share that with you because I thought it was really cute and yeah. Honestly, I have no idea how vloggers like film in their car because this was really hard to find an okay place to put this. So I made a new friend in the church nursery probably like two months ago and her and I both had the same just like feeling in our heart that we wanted to make some community with other women and so on Fridays at 10 we started to do a coffee in Jesus at a local coffee shop just where different moms or just women in different stages of life could all just meet together we do a quick devotional maybe a little scripture reading but then it's pretty much just laid back talking hanging out talking about life and birth and marriage and just all these different things four of us have little babies and just seeing how all the babies interact with each other or just have different personalities has been so much fun i did film a little bit of footage while i was in there that's what you guys will be seeing but yeah we just went and it was so good today i kind of felt called on my heart to talk about the scripture of Matthew 14 22 through 23 where Jesus was walking on the water and he was calling out the disciples to come to him and they first you know thought he was a ghost and then when they stepped out on the water as long as they kept their eyes on him they were able to keep afloat on the water but as soon as they took their eyes off of him they would start to sink and it was just a really good reminder to you know keep our focus on Jesus because as long as our focus is on him we will stay afloat so anyway that was just a really good reminder today and after coffee I went with my friend Angelica who I am doing this coffee with Jesus thing with um, and I told her I was like I'm gonna stop in the bookstore which is right next to the coffee shop and she was like I'm gonna stop in there too so it was really fun we kind of walked around for a minute and I just was pointing at books to her telling her you need to read this you need to read this yeah, that was just super duper fun I am back home now and my goal today is to finish reading the heart of betrayal I think I maybe have an hour an hour 15 minutes left of the audio so I would like to finish that and give you guys just my final thoughts and review
it's super rainy outside so please don't mind that my hair is a complete disaster i'm so excited about this so my friend angelica that i mentioned earlier i think we've just become such good friends because she has a baby around my baby's age um she loves jesus too and she loves to read and we were actually reading the same exact series when we first met i told her that since becoming a mom like i pretty much have to read on my kindle and she said that she had a friend who is starting a small business of kindle cases i wanted to support her friend she is also a mama her instagram is shop read all day go and find her and follow her oh my gosh oh she said k you were my first order at launch thank you so much for your love and support oh i'm so i feel so honored that i was your first order oh that's so special i'm going to keep her sweet card and it looks like at shop dot read all day look how cute i you guys know dark green is my favorite color but this little packaging is adorable making life cuter case by case ah you guys it's so cute and it feels like pleather kind of hard leathery it feels really nice front and back is like this and you open it screen clock cleaner that's awesome this is what the inside looks like this is like silicone-y it's pretty flexible it feels really nice and one thing she did that she posted online is she put like a little button where the on button goes so let's put this on my candle all of my super cute stickers we're gonna take the kindle and we have the case oh wow that pops in really smooth that is very non-damaging that's awesome the button you can press it i like that because you have to press a little bit harder so you're less likely to just like bump it as you're reading where it's closed and then once you open it it should turn on. Yes, I love that. I cannot read without a pop socket. I have an extra base, but I'm just gonna stick the base on here. I think that will be good. And we're gonna take my pop socket, and this one is just one of the snap-off ones, and snap it on here. Ta-da! That is so perfect. I'm so excited about this. Shout out to Shop Read All Day. I feel like I have some spooky ghost story sleepover lighting going on right now. I have 40 minutes left of the audiobook for The Heart of Betrayal, so I'm going to really try and finish this tonight. The last chapter was so intense and then I had to leave and go work at the salon and I don't know sometimes I just struggle because <laughs> when something really intense happens in a book and then like you have other priorities sometimes as a reader my reader heart is just like priorities be darned I just have no words for Mary E. Pearson. I hate her. I love her. She's incredible. I finished Heart of Betrayal last night and this is the second book in the Remnant Chronicles. The ending of every single Mary E. Pearson book that I've read, and this is the fourth one, they are just so intense. I can't really give anything away about this book, but I'm not coping well. I'm not coping well. And I have to wait for the third for my library. If you've never read The Remnant Chronicles, please pick it up. Please. Especially if you are a fantasy reader, romanticy reader. This is YA. She's a genius. I can't spoil anything. I can't talk about it and I need to talk about it. If you've read this book, can you please comment below that you've read this book? <laughs> I need to talk to somebody. Send me a message on Instagram at Case Library, please. I need to talk about this, okay? 
This is my cry for help. Okay, you guys, so that concludes my first ever weekly type of reading vlog, life vlog type thing. Thing. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I'm definitely an amateur and trying to figure out how to tell a story through my vlog and piece things together. So I think this went pretty well for my first time and it was just so much fun just pulling out the camera here and there for a couple minutes a week. It was definitely refreshing change of pace. Oh, bless you. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It genuinely means so much to me. And honestly, you guys, it is so much more than numbers. All of those things do really help me out and just let me know that you guys enjoy what I'm putting out. I really appreciate all of you so much and I am going to try <laughs> to get back on the wagon and be on here every single week. Life just happens and I'm trying to do this no pressure because I do have a seven month old baby. This is what my friend Carly said. She said, it's Zion's world, we're just living in it. <laughs> that is just the truth. So anyway, I hope you guys have a fabulous week and I will hopefully see you guys next week. Bye.